Hi, with such a wide variety of yarn to choose from, the most important thing to keep in mind while you're making your choices is that you're picking the right yarn for the right project. Believe me when I'm telling you, I struggled a lot at the beginning when I started crochet because I didn't know anything about yarn. I didn't know how to read a label or weight or anything. Therefore, I decided to take the time to explain you the basics yet valuable information about yarn necessarily for you to understand in order to start your projects in this video. Hey guys, welcome to Lula Loops and Stitches. Not only I want you to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss anything, but have you signed up for my monthly newsletter? It's easy. All you have to do is click the link to my website, lolaloopsandstitches.com, below in the description. Scroll down and subscribe to my monthly newsletter so you don't miss any of my tutorials, offers, blogs, and giveaways. And don't forget to follow me on social media, especially on Instagram, for behind the scenes and much more. Hey guys, welcome to Lola Loops and Stitches. So, you went to the store, right? And then when you approach the aisle, you get overwhelmed because all you see is a bunch of yarn that, that comes in a different shapes, different sizes, different thickness, and you don't know where to start. Don't worry, because that happened to me too. Like I said at the beginning, I didn't know anything about yarn, and I struggled and I made mistakes. Um, that's why I'm taking the time to guide you through the basic. That information you need to know now as a beginner in order to start your project. Of course, you learn more as you go, but for now, I don't want to overwhelm you and I'd rather give you the basic information that you need to learn as per reading the label and how is that the yarn comes from the stores. Now, you went to the store and then let's say you find this type of yarn. You see, they have this one, or they come like this, or they come like this. All these yarns that I'm showing you here, this is called skein. We call it skein, a ball. They come like a ball of yarn. It comes like a, a cake. They all skein. Skeins are um, a machine wonder um, bundle. Um, it comes from the manufacturers and they all come with a label. In the label, you're going to see the brand and some important information for you to start um, your project successfully, okay? Um, they also are named differently. Um, it's not just skein, but for example, this is a skein, but it's called cake. Or this is a skein, but it's called a ball of yarn. Or this one is called pull skein because you can pull the string from the middle. You can start working from the middle to from the center to the to the outside or vice versa. So you see, uh, this one I know I don't know if I said, but this one is called bullet <laughs> bullet yarn. Anyway, um, they all come with label. They all come with different brands. Um, for example, this is from Lion Brand. Um, but this one is from on Lydia's brand. So they come different brands. This one is from Premier, okay? But they all come, the similarity of them is that most of them come with their labels, okay? Now, there are other type of yarn that you're not gonna see much on major stores. They don't carry that much. And those yarns are the ones that are made by hand dyers they dye their yarn at home, right? Or in wherever they they have their store, they do it. And they, they turn it like this, and we call this a hank. Some of them come with the label here, but some of them they don't. However, the company, they're gonna give you a card with the specifics. And in this card, you are going to see the information needed in order to start your project. So the same, most, not the same, but close to information you find in this label, 
made by the manufacturer distributor by manufacturer and this one that are handmade um, they have the label as well so it doesn't matter they're gonna have this one actually is for expression fiber art one of my favorites there's a difference between the hank and the skein not only they look different the way they've been put it all together to sell but the skein is ready to be used you buy it at the store and right there you start working on it um, you pull the string and that's it but when it comes to hank you cannot just buy it and start working on it you need to untwist the hank and you need to make this into a ball in order to start working with the yarn so you see there's some difference some benefits to it um and some cons to it um it's very easy to do some people just do it by hand they just untwist and they make into a bowl by hand the others that use different apparatus or little machines they have in order to turn this into a bowl another difference you're going to find among yarns is the fibers uh, for example, you can find plant-based fibers for um, that will be the cotton. You can also find synthetic base fibers that will be uh, acrylic, for example, to name few. Um, you also have animal based um, fibers that will be the wool, the merino, the alpaca llama you name it there's a lot of fibers out there um, that you can play with one of the important elements of and differences that you are going to find in um, among yarns is the weight and when i say weight it's not the weight on scale as per ounces or pounds or grams what i'm talking about is the weight of the thickness of the yarn the thickness of the yarn has been categorized by number. If you notice, if you notice, for example, this one here, this yarn here, when you go to the label, it has a number four, which is categorized as worsted. And if you compare with this one, you'll see this one is number zero. That will be lace so the thickness of the yarn has been categorized for you to be able to select the appropriate yarn for the work or the project you have in mind for example a while back my mom wanted me to crochet a shawl um, she wanted the shawl to be lighter she didn't want something heavy to it. She lives in the island, it's warm. So she wanted something like to go to church. So I opted by buying a skein of yarn. Um, number one, it's more lace. And this is the way it came up. You see it's more drapey. Now, um, the other day I made a, a cowl, but in this case, the cowl is more for winter and I went and I purchased an acrylic yarn, number, I believe five, which is more, number six, it's more chunky, and I made a cowl. You see the difference? This is more thicker, and this is more soft and drapey. So that's why they have been categorized. Now I'm going to explain you the label and the part that are the most important part as a beginner that you need to know. Okay, so here I have a skein of yarn. Um, the brand is Craft Smart. Um, every brand comes up with different um, style of yarn, different colors. I always recommend people to always keep a journal where you write the brand, um, also the number of the lot, and also the color in, um, in the event you want to go ahead and buy more from it. Now, one thing that you want, one thing that's the most important part of the skein you want to look at, um, if it's that you're looking for a specific project that you're going to complete, here is the most important information. Here you're going to find the weight, 
which we said um, already explained to you that the weight is in reference of the thickness um, if you are going to crochet with this one then you're going to take a look at the crochet hook because um, the yarn always is going to give you recommend you the crochet hook the the size of the crochet hook you're going to be used recommended to be used with this um, yarn on um, the thickness of this yarn um, also it's going to give you the if you're a knitter then it's going to give you the size of the needles you need in the knitting for knitting um, also you are going to look at the fiber in this case it's a hundred percent acrylic so these are the most important the most important part you're going to focus on is in the size of the hook or the needle um, the thickness of your of the yarn that you're gonna work with and also the fiber that's one of the most important thing another important part of this label is how to take care of the um, yarn um, like any other piece of clothing you have and they have that label on the back telling you if you could put it on the washing machine or not dryer it's the same thing with yarn so let's say you make a garment for uh, as a gift you want to make sure you write a little note with how to take care of that item also um, you can find on labels you can find patterns like this one this is in this brand um, every time I buy this brand I see they have a pattern um, some of them they don't when they have a pattern they're most likely on the back okay you can find that pattern on the back and the pattern is for the picture here which is the hat in this case and it also tells you what are the the things you need to look at what it, you need like you need this type of needles and blah 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 how difficult it is and so on now here I have another one this one is Aunt Lydia's this is cotton a hundred percent cotton and if you notice it also has a label with the information here you're going to find that is zero and that means that is thinner um, also it's going to give you the crochet hook size that you need to use so you see you're going to find this type of information in all the labels you find on yarns um, I'm going to show you the standard yarn weight system that we crochet and knitters we use okay this here is the standard yarn weight system it was created by the craft yarn council known as CYC CYC is a nonprofit trade association representing manufacturers and distributors of yarns used in knitting, crocheting, and many other crafts. The publisher, fiber needle and hook manufacturers, and yarn members of the Craft Yarn Council have worked together to set up a series of guidelines and symbols to bring uniformity to yarn, needle and hook labeling, and to patterns. Their goal is to make it easier for industry, manufacturers, publishers, and designers from all over the world prepare consumer-friendly products and for consumers to select the right materials for projects and complete it. It comes in other languages to benefit other besides the English population. This is the guideline created to be used as reference, reference as needed. CYC divided yarn weights into categories. They categorize yarn weights using numbers. In this chart, you'll find numbers ranging from zero all the way to seven to describe the thickness of the yarn on hand. For example, when I look at the number zero, if we take a look, I'm going to zoom this out here. When you look at the number zero, I'm looking into, um, you're looking into a lace weight which is known by other names as per lace. Now, if you look at the number one, then you'll know you are holding a super fine yarn, also known as sock, fingering, and baby. And that's how it works in all other categories. Now let's compare some of the information in a label that you can find in this chart. And let's compare, remember when we have this at the beginning, I showed this one. Let me put it here right, like 
this perhaps <laughs> just want to make sure you all see so if you see here in this label says number four medium and if you go here and you check at the number four it says medium the chart not only the chart not only show you the category number of thickness it also shows you which um crochet hook you'll be is the recommendation for that thickness of yarn you're going to work with for example number four here if you go down here it says about the kneading but i'm going to focus a little bit on the crochet because that's my forte <laughs> so here um here has the 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 number four but if i go like this i'm going to just zoom here so you see a little bit more here we have number four uh, here's the knee the needle for the kneading needle for the kneading now let's go for the crochet which is down here so here it says number four which is up here number four and i'll come down here and he's recommending me a hook metric in size 5.5 to 6.5 millimeter they also give you the same the hook size on usa every some countries have different name ways to name the sizes of the crochet hook and some of them use letters like in usa we use letters uh, they have uk canada and so on i'm focusing on the usa because that's the one i always use the american version of size or i use pretty much the universal one which is the hook and metric size range. Now we look at this and it says for 5.5. This is the recommendation for the thickness of the number four medium. Now I'm going to check here in the label, it's actually said number four, and the crochet hook that is recommending you is the 5.5 millimeter USI9, you see? So that's how it, this is the basic. Of course, there are other more information in here but I do not want to overwhelm you because if not, you're gonna get all confused. They talking about the gauge. Um, they talking about there are other things here that are that needs a little bit more time to explain and I don't want to mix it. But right now, the most important parts that you want to focus, like I said before, is the category of the thickness um, for your work and also looking into which crochet hook you are um is recommending you to use for this for the thickness of the yarn you're going to work with now if i go with a zero you see remember i show you the zero it says zero here and i see here is the zero and it's here is recommending in this it's recommended 1.5 millimeter crochet hook and here if i go zero here it's recommending let me see uh, okay it's actually saying 1.6 1.4 millimeter okay so it's in that range now that doesn't mean that it has to be true to size for example there works um you are going to encounter as you work with patterns that um requires you to work with a crochet hook way bigger than the suggested just to um create and or um yeah create the effect that you're looking for in this particular project so basically this is what it is i hope you learned something new guys um there's um there's more to all this but it takes more than just a short video to explain explain as i said before you'll learn more as you practice and don't forget to like this video hey guys if this video added any value do you learn something new go ahead in the comments and let me know you can also ask me questions and you can also let me know what other things you would like to learn don't forget to subscribe and hit, click the, the notification so you don't miss anything also go to instagram follow me for behind the scenes and see you next time Hey, check out my other videos where I'm showing necessary skills needed to grow faster in the crochet world. You can find Lola Loops and Stitches on Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.